all right so what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel man it's your boy and as you can see we have the 714 patch details here finally for marvel future fight this one is bringing in five new uniforms one new character new tier three and new awakenings so this one's actually going to be a pretty good one pretty expensive one a mixed bag if you will i feel like there's some things here that's going to make some people happy others might make people very very upset so first thing you need to know is that this thing will actually be applied in waves and it will be starting tonight at 9 p.m pdt or if you're on the east coast like me it's going to be around 11 p.m est so keep that in mind with that being said let's jump right into it first character on the list is the new character spectrum monica rambo now this character is actually going to be a paywall character as we expected so you're gonna have to pay to get some biometrics for her if you start playing the game after this point keep that in mind because even though you have to pay to get the character in the future there's actually going to be a timed event as you can see timed july special event magic versus science faction war reward which means they're finally after all this time creating a new faction war and they're actually going to be giving away monica rambo's biometrics for free i believe you're going to get about 150 be careful with these bios do not use them to rank up the character if anything use them to rank up her gears because it is relatively cheap to enhance a native tier one character's gears all the way to 20 okay so when this faction war starts it's probably not going to start until like a week after the update goes live this patch update i'm talking about so be very mindful when you start the event do not wastefully use your bios use tickets to get her to six stars and then if anything use your biometrics to get her years done because that is possibly going to be the cheapest way for you to get this character to tier two without using a mega tier two advancement ticket moving on let's talk about her skills and abilities so starting with her leadership 36 percent energy attack and ignore dodge to all allies is actually pretty good very very useful for null quicksilver and corvus glaive the ignore dodge there is actually not something to pass over next thing we got to talk about here is our tier one passive as you can see increases all attack and defense by 20 percent and she has a hundred percent chance to dodge physical attacks for five seconds every seven seconds this is actually really really powerful however just keep in mind that even though she has a hundred percent chance to dodge physical attacks and it does make sense because she's a form of light and if you're doing physical attacks how are you going to punch light you can't right so that's actually pretty cool however if you have ignore dodge you can work around this if you have like penetration if it was immunity you could work around it so this is not like a op thing it's just a really cool thing that is unique to this character and it does make sense right they could have added immunity here they added dodge to physical attacks but even still if you have ignore dodge you can work around this all right so pretty cool ability i like it i like it a lot actually moving on we have her tier 2 passive which actually decreases energy damage received by 60 percent so she could see some play in pvp she could see some play in pvp with the ability to ignore physical attacks in addition to reducing energy damage by 60 percent that could actually be enough to make her survivability viable we don't know yet we'll see Increasing her skill damage and bonus damage by 25 and 35% is actually pretty good. And then we have a 100% chance to increase critical damage by 50% on critical attacks. That's actually pretty good. However, it's not as good as um, Rogues, Sabertooth, and Namor. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll bring that up for you right now. So right here on Sabertooth's tier 2 passive, you can see... 30% chance to increase critical damage by 100% on critical attacks. Monica has a 100% chance, so it's guaranteed every time she crits, she's going to do 50% extra damage. But I kind of like Sabertooth a little bit more because even though it's a 30% chance, with all the hits that these characters have, that 30% feels like 100%. It feels like it's happening 100% of the time. So I'd rather have the chance be 30% and the critical damage be 100% rather than having a 100% chance 
and a 50% damage increase, right? So yeah, it's the same thing for um, Namor as well. It's a 30% chance and 100% more critical damage. Rogue is actually pretty spicy because of the fact that on her uniform bonus here, it says 33% chance to increase her critical damage by 100% on critical strikes. However, we know how Rogue works. With Rogue, any kind of buff effect gets amplified so even though on her uniform bonus it's saying it's a 33 percent chance it's actually a 39.6 percent chance and instead of only increasing your critical damage by a hundred percent it's a hundred and twenty percent so yeah rogue is pretty busted when it comes to um buff type effects because of her tier 2 passive back to monica and her skill set because i think it's still really really powerful moving on so we have a 20 percent hp recovery here because it is 10 percent for two seconds we have damage accumulation it's damage dealt which is very very good it's 0 0.7 so eh, could be better not the worst right so we'll see how that um, meshes with the rest of our skills we have a 30 percent lightning damage increase because this skill does lightning damage shocking moving on paralysis and we have all attack and 20% crit rate here for seven seconds, 19 second cooldown. I don't really like the cooldown time on this. Kind of very, very long, but I do like the buff. Overall, like I said, very, very good kit. Keep in mind, she is getting an awakening. So that coupled with the awakening, especially since she's getting accumulation on the base kit and not on the awakening, that's actually very, very good, okay? You don't have to wait every like 30 seconds to put up your accumulation. Should see great stuff from her. We'll see. So next up, we have my man, Blue Marvel, coming in. Still a superhero, still universal. Still, I'm hoping, very, very tanky. Because natively, he has 70% damage reduction on his uh, four-star passive. It's one of the strongest four-star passives in the game. If you just go to... Um, hey, though, it takes you back to the main page every single time. But natively, Blue Marvel is a very, very tanky character. Or at least he was when he first came in because of the 70% damage reduction. So him getting a tier three to give him more stats, uh, this is gonna be very, very interesting. He could definitely become a PVP character. Again, taking a look at his uh, uniform bonus here, it applies to all allies. All resistance get increased by 30%, so that's very good. Increased damage dealt to targets with the mockery ability. Um, this is a new ability that is exclusive to blue marvel we'll talk about that in a second and then it also increases i'm not sure if these two stack if that's the case that would be 60 percent more damage which is nuts right we'll see but this also increases the damage delta targets with a purifying effect so basically debuff removal okay the debuff removal effect that is so op for pvp because it provides you with protection against stun time freeze paralysis and all those other effects right that might actually start working against you if you go up against a blue marvel because if he stuns you and then you purify then you immediately start taking 30 percent more damage from everyone on blue marvel's team so even if he dies you're taking 30% more damage. And then on top of that, if this stacks with the mockery ability that he has here on his third skill, that's 60% more damage from Blue Marvel and everybody on his team, even if he dies, right? So that's actually really good. The first two skills are just stun, just basic skills. The uh, next skill is actually what gets interesting. So right here, it applies the mockery effect to the target, forces the opponents to attack the caster i'm not sure why they would attack anybody else it's pvp it's one-on-one -on -one, right maybe i guess for battle world or something it would just force them to like attack blue marvel we'll see and blue marvel is pretty tanky so that could protect your other character while your other character just come from behind and then just like nuke them we'll see anyways could be really good yeah could good be good for like ac and at and stuff Anyways, moving on, cannot be removed with remove all debuff effects, increases attack by 10%. So when you pop this up, you get 10% more attack to go along with the fact that you're now doing 30% more damage and this cannot be removed. So if they try to purify it, now you're doing 70% more damage with your blue marvel, which is nuts, right? <laughs> oh my gosh, 
<laughs> that's nuts plus if you're using sentry's leadership and then sentry's leadership goes off because they try to debuff you then you get another attack buff on top because sentry gives you what is it 20 percent all attack and stuff all right, like this is gonna be nuts we're gonna be able to stack so many buffs for this man all right Here's the thing though, I'm not sure how the rest of this skill gets applied. It says, but there is a 100% chance to not receive the barrier, shield, all damage immunity and invincibility effect for 15 seconds. So I'm assuming the mockery ability lasts for 15 seconds. This skill is on a 13 second cooldown so you can pretty much keep the mockery ability up all the time because every seven seconds you're gonna be able to put it up, it lasts for 15. But the negative aspect of this, I'm not sure if it's being applied to you, which means you won't be able to put up your immunity effects or if it's being applied to the enemy. I believe this is being applied to the enemy, right? I believe this 100% chance for them to not be able to put up any kind of protection, meaning iframe is the only thing that will protect them. Uh, that's naughty, right? That's actually naughty, boys. If that's the case, you get an attack buff and they can't put up anything, um, they better jump in the iframe like <laughs> it's all they have, bro. And the thing is, he doesn't have iframe ignore it, so it's literally the only way to stop him from punching your face in, right? Invincibility, V-pad skill, attack proc, and then we got incapacitation here, 40% all attack, 35 all defense, 14% all speed. By the way, he heals for 25% of his max HP over five seconds. So that's actually pretty good. Oh man, he's actually looking pretty good. The only thing he's missing, like in terms of like having a complete set, he doesn't need like a revive. I think he's natively very tanky. If he gets a substantial HP buff, that'll be good from his tier three because he is getting a tier three. I think the only thing he's missing here is iframe ignore. I think if he had iframe ignore on one of these skills to make it so that if they can't protect themselves via damage, immunity, shield, invincibility, and whatnot, and then they jump into an iframe to protect themselves, he could just punch them right under the iframe. That would be perfect. But it is what it is. I guess maybe if they try to jump in iframes to escape, you could just tag into another character because if the mark effect is already applied, um, all your other characters are just going to do more damage and have more resistance and whatnot. So yeah, I feel like he might actually be clutch for PVP. We'll see. Next up is Captain Marvel. Now Captain Marvel is getting a substantial buff. It's very, very substantial. So first and foremost, she's becoming a super villain, even though technically in this run, she's not a super villain, but I'll take it because now she becomes squad battle meta. You don't have to use Cosmic Ghost Rider anymore, which means if you were struggling to get over um, 800K before, which I don't know why you would be, but if you were, now you get an easy option. Captain Marvel in this uniform will get you 800K, no problem. And you can push for rank one if that's something you desire. However, looking at her uniform bonus, it's absolutely disgustingly broken, right? It's like Thanos's, but they doubled it. It's actually insane. Thanos has one of the best uniform bonuses in the game. We praise him for it all the time. It's part of the reason why he's such a tanky character, endgame Thanos, that is. He does 20% extra damage to all superheroes, and then he takes 30% less damage from them, and then overall, he gets a flat 20% damage reduction on top of all that. So when heroes are attacking Thanos, they do 50% less damage and take 20% more damage from him. When Carol is <laughs> up against super villains, ladies and gentlemen, it's the exact same thing, except better. As you can see right here, super villain characters take 50% more damage from her, and then she takes 50% less damage from them, and a flat 40% damage reduction on top of that. So she's gonna be a super tank. And honestly, that's really good because before she was actually really, really strong with her endgame uniform, but she lacked survivability. She didn't have the means to tank. Her HP pool wasn't that high and she didn't heal. However, this time around, they gave her the sauce, boys. They gave her super armor, all defense. They gave her damage reduction out the wazoo and extra damage to super villains. It's nuts. If they gave her extra damage to superheroes as well, that would be insane. But I think with extra damage to uh super villains that might actually make her pretty spicy for world boss legend we shall see but squad battle meta definitely pvp meta maybe we shall see 
We got paralysis here. We got burn there. So she could possibly do work for you in ABX if you don't have a uh, super giant built up. But I think super giant might still be stronger. We shall see. I like the fact that she is not replacing Scarlet Witch and shafting those who invested heavily in my queen. So salute to the future fight team for that. Finding a way to make Captain Marvel strong but not stepping on any toes. I respect it. Okay, we got Fracture there. She's keeping her ignore targeting effect on the fourth skill. That's good. And she's getting a really big attack buff. Yes, beautiful. They buff the attack buff on her uh, fifth skill and actually cut the cooldown time substantially. She actually got a pretty big upgrade because before this was a 35 second cooldown and then you had 15% all attack and another 15 at the bottom there. So at most you were getting 30% all attack. Now you're actually getting 40% and you're able to keep it up all the time whereas before you could not. So moving on we have Black Panther 3099 and this one kind of um has me feeling some type of way i feel like some people might be happy with this but some people might not be so what am i talking about so first and foremost black panther's uniform bonus super armor all defense i don't really care for defense you guys know that i would have preferred chain hit damage or something along those lines and i feel as though for his uh tier three skill they didn't go far enough all they really did was they changed the uh ignore defense and the ignore dodge here from five second duration to 10 second duration. So basically they make it so it lasts for the entire duration of the tier three skill. Cool, I feel like they should have done more, in my opinion. Right here, Panther Frenzy, 15% critical damage, just base critical damage. And then very similar to Monica Rambeau, he gets a 100% chance to do 10% extra critical damage. I feel like they're missing a zero here. Like this is so bad. This this is a, this feels like a shaft to me, guys. Right? Namor, Sabretooth, and Rogue get a 30% chance to do a hundred percent more. And like I said, if you're hitting a lot, that 30 feels like a hundred. Whereas Black Panther is getting a hundred percent chance to do 10% more. How do you guys feel about that? For me personally, I feel as though it's a shaft. I would personally prefer the 30% chance to get 100% extra damage than the 100% chance to do 10% more damage. Because if you have enough hits on your skills, you're gonna be doing that 100% extra damage pretty much all the time or every few seconds because you're hitting like 20, 30, 40, 50 times like in like 10 20 seconds right so that 30 is gonna feel like a hundred whereas sure you have a hundred percent but it's only 10 percent extra critical damage so yeah i feel like that might be a bit of a shaft let me know how you guys feel about that i feel like i would have preferred it the other way around right even if this was 10 percent, i would have preferred if this was a hundred percent sad times boys moving on so black panther is getting a 50 percent guaranteed crit rate buff which means he's always gonna be critting so maybe that's why they kept this really really low like almost as low as they could possibly go i think the lowest they could go and like not be spitting in his face pretty much is like five percent but i feel like ten percent is pretty bad moving on we got the whole bleed schmick there obviously it's just pretty much garbage we got paralysis stun and silence down here we have a guard hit we have damage accumulation this is a uh, pretty much the saving grace it's not actually accumulation based on damage taken it's based on damage dealt so it's not like sharon rogers it's the more offensive variant this one you can actually keep up all the time and it is one percent so that is very very good moving on we got a 40 percent all attack all defense buff here and then down here we have a 30 percent all attack all defense and crit rate buff so that's actually really good you should be critting pretty often with the damage accumulation being able to be kept up all the time it'll be interesting to see what his damage looks like even with only 10 percent extra damage on the crits however you might be noticing that black panther is missing one thing here and i feel like it might be what deters a lot of people from buying this uniform and it's the exact same thing that bucky was missing that people were not really too fond of he does not have a heal and when it comes to clearing end game content the world boss legend specifically once you get into like the 20s you're gonna need a heal some people once you get to like stage 10 stage 15 you already need a heal 
because the bosses just start doing so much damage to you your damage immunity your invincibility that means nothing your ignore dodge that means nothing falcon knows this any of you guys who play with falcon know that when you're going up against mephisto even though you can kill mephisto very very quickly mephisto has ignore dodge what feels like a hundred percent which makes sense because on mephisto's tier three he has 70 percent ignore dodge so it stands to reason that in his boss stage when you're fighting him he probably already has that built in so that's probably why a lot of people notice that falcon dies a lot and his dodge doesn't activate his healing so if he's a character that has one of the most broken types of healing in the game and he's dying on you a lot if you play him you will notice and you can agree with that a character like black panther that doesn't have a heal has a type disadvantage going up against mephisto you can expect that he's going to die a lot so i'm gonna request humbly in the name of the king that the future fight team consider adding a heal to black panther whether before the patch or before the next update. That would be nice. America Chavez. Let's talk about her. I do like Chavez. She's getting a 15% HP buff. Very similar to what we see them do for like uh, Kamala Khan. So 15% is actually pretty nice. Uh, decrease um, reflect damage is pretty good. I feel like a lot of people besides the super fans that really love her, like myself, they're probably going to build her for AC and uh, keep her that way. Let's see what else we got here. So leadership is actually pretty good. All attack and dodge. We got some extra crit rate here and a 30% ignore dodge. And we got some super armor, some all defense damage reduction, but from physical damage, that's 60% skill damage, bonus damage. That's actually really, really good. Substantial buffs here for this girl, even though her skill animations are not being changed too, too much. We got a stun, we got stun, we got stun here again. So really, really good for AC. If people are not using a uh, debuff removal leadership, she'll literally stun them until they die. So that's something for you to keep in mind. Damage immunity. And keep in mind, she always was a character that was like jumping back and forth in iframes because she's jumping through dimensions. So with all this, um, yeah, I feel like she can be really good for AC. Moving on, we got... Uh, defense down and she got a 20 percent hp recovery so america chavez can heal black panther cannot that is a feels bad moment moving on we got a uh, penetration be good for conquest we got invincibility good for conquest and we got some all attack here crit rate and all speed it's pretty good i i'm gonna have fun with uh, chavez i really really like the character loved her when she came out still love her to this day Mwah. love my latinas okay let's go so moving on we got bazaar let's see what's up with you my girl increased chain hit damage by 20 percent and then we got a uh, decrease all damage received by 30 percent so a little bit of offense actually a lot of offense 20 percent chain hit is nothing to uh, glance over so right here you think about giving her an energy she might be doing some big big things we'll try her out effect reactivates seven seconds after being removed okay that's good so if it gets removed she can just put it right back up okay when debuffed removes all debuffs for seven seconds every 15 seconds and she creates a shield for 50 percent of her max hp for five seconds that's actually really good really really good for our war boss legend and stuff oh man and for ac as well so she won't even need a debuff leadership damn quasar what's up baby all right, so we got stun, we got stun, remove all active buffs, not all buffs, all active buffs. So that's actually pretty good for AC. I don't think she's going to be a timeline meta. Just keep that in mind. Um, paralysis, so that's actually pretty good. Defense down 50%. We got immunity, 4 seconds, 11 second cooldown. That's actually pretty good. She recovers. Again, another character that heals. That's pretty good. And then we got penetration. We got invincibility, 7 seconds, 30 second cooldown. So... Between the immunity and her iframes and her HP shield, her healing, her debuff removal, you can see a lot of survivability built in. So I feel like she's gonna be a pretty good character. And then she has stun, silence, invincibility down here again. And then on top of that, she has damage accumulation, 0.7, similar to Monica. And it lasts for seven seconds with a seven second cooldown because with max kill cooldown, you cut that in half, right? So that's actually really good. I see a lot of people saying Chavez is a skip. Um, I see a lot of people saying Quasar is a skip. I feel like both of these characters are really good. Don't sleep on them. If you like them, I feel like you can get stuff done with them. I will definitely be having fun with them myself. So right here, I'm looking at um, Blue Marvel's Cosmic Break. And I can't help but see the similarities between his skill and T'Challa's, right? Ignore targets defense. So that's just ignore defense, right? By 10%. 
and then ignore dodge by 100% for six seconds. Black Panther's old tier three allowed him right here, right? <laughs> Look at this. So 15% ignore defense and then 100% ignore dodge. Before this was five seconds, now it's 10 seconds. So they literally just copied a portion of uh, Black Panther's uh, tier three skill and just put it at the beginning of uh, my man's uh, tier three skill here. And then looks like they ran out of techs and then they just decided, okay, invincibility, attack proc, 50% all attack, and then some energy damage. Okay. <laughs> those effects are very underwhelming the 50 percent all attack buff is nice the ignore dodge is nice for like war boss legend and stuff but i feel like they could have gone a little bit further anyways moving on so for chavez she has incapacitation and defense down the only bad thing about chavez is she doesn't have damage accumulation so just keep that in mind for quasar she has paralysis and then for Monica, she removes all active buffs. But Monica and Quasar have accumulation built into their kit. So the only one left out is um, my girl here, Chavez, sad times. Okay, all the skills look the same. They're just creating like a tornado type of thing. Then we have the uniform collection. You buy all these uniforms, you rank them all up, you get a million gold. What an insult. Moving on. Two effects have been changed for Black Panther's ultimate skill. So before it was five seconds, now it's 10 seconds. Big whoop, should have added more. Even like heal on his tier three, I would have taken that. Anyways, um, yeah, kind of sad about that still. And then they removed the all attack, all defense, all speed buff. And they basically just increased the, uh, the skill damage. And Captain Marvel's striker ability has been changed from fast movement, which basically gave you movement speed, to now being leadership. So for War Boss Legend, Captain Marvel is going to give you extra damage to supervillains, similar to characters like Hyperion, Moon Knight, Sharon Rogers, and all those other characters you use to give you extra damage against supervillains. The name of the purifying effect has been changed from purified to remove all debuffs. So if that's the case, why did you change um the effect that was listed for blue marvel's uniform if you're changing the name of purify why did you put purify in hold on where is it yeah if you're changing the name of purify why did you put purify here why didn't you put remove all debuff effects confusion hello we'll see we'll see if they change it in game and then they're fixing black panthers um tier three skill with the old uniform all right so overall i think these patch notes are actually pretty good being able to acquire monica rambo for free is actually a major win for the free-to-play community the character looks pretty good however i feel like black panther's uniform might end up disappointing some people similar to how even though winter soldier's uniform is very strong most people are probably going to skip over it or not use him at all for anything besides his leadership just because of the fact that he doesn't heal and for war boss legend it's just not viable so if black panther gets a uniform and he doesn't get a heal i feel like within two weeks he'll be back on the shelf where he was and that would be rather upsetting because the character was sitting there for years okay so leave me your thoughts in the comments and i will catch you in the next one Pat